welcome back to the channel. We are starting a new series that we're going to be doing throughout the year and it is going to be either seasonal based or holiday based and it's going to be called Cards and Crafts and it's going to be a series of videos for each holiday or seasonal um, th that's coming around that is geared towards that particular um, occasion. So we're going to start off with doing a Valentine's and this particular one may have maybe uh, series might have one or two cards along with some craft projects, but I thought it would be a great way for me in particular to use things that are in my collection, but also try new things. So I am going to just kind of give you a rundown of what I'm using for this card. I'll start with the cardstock. So we're going to use some white cardstock. I just pulled out two or three panels here. I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. I have some pink cardstock and light green. I have an idea of what I want to do. Then I have a sentiment stamp set. This is this is one I just recently purchased, but it was last year and I haven't used it yet. And I'm going to use this because there's a definitely some Valentine's Day themed uh, sentiments in here. Another thing that I purchased at the end of last year that didn't uh, get used, which is this leaf die. So I'm going to use that. And I have a cover plate. So this one I can either do a cover plate or an embossing folder, but I think I'm going to go with this cover plate. We're going to use this. I may have used this once or twice when I first purchased it, but um, I can't remember. And then I have two of these waffle flower layered dies. Again, something I've had in my stash. So I have the circles and the layer dies in the rectangles. And I pulled that out because we are going to be making a wreath, which is something I've never done before. I've never done anything that, um, that involved making a wreath. So I thought the circle would help me um, kind of be my guide for making the circle. And then this is a die set that I have had for many years. And I really just wanted to use it for these little hearts. So I'm going to use this little panel here of uh, hearts. And then I'm also going to grab this layer right here, which is a little string of hearts. So we have two different size hearts. I did go ahead and already pull out the circle pieces that I'm going to use for my wreath. So I have those pulled out and I just went with a sort of a smaller shape. Um, I didn't know how big I wanted it to be, but I did go kind of like in the middle of this section. These are pulled out because I may need them. Not 100% sure. I'll set those aside. And I definitely know I'm going to be die cutting this plate right here. And for this one, I'm definitely going to be using this smaller leaf die. And I did pull this out before just to kind of see what it looked like. And it's one piece. But I think what I'm going to do is cut all of it and then use sections of this if I need to fill in my wreath. So I'm going to do that. And then my sentiment we'll pick out later. I'm going to need my cardstock. So I am going to start off with die cutting. I'm going to do the first, I'm going to do the circles and I'm going to do those right onto the green cardstock, which is also going to be the color for my leaves. And I figure that if I do the green circle, it'll at least hide the, um, if you happen to see the circle through whatever I design here, it'll at least hide it a little bit and kind of disguise it. So it's not quite as obvious if I use maybe white. I'm going to die cut this probably three or four times just to get a nice um, dimension to it. So instead of using foam dots or anything like that, I want to pop this up by just creating a bunch of layers that I will glue together. So like I said, I'm going to die cut that a couple of times. I'm also going to use the leaf on this green cardstock. I might need more green cardstock. We'll see how we go here. For this particular hearts, I'm going to die cut this one several times on the pink cardstock. I don't know how many of these I'll need, but I will die cut it a bunch of times and get those set aside. And then I also am going to do the small white ones a couple of times too. And then my last thing is going to be the white cardstock with this background plate. I'm going to go ahead and do all of the die cutting and then we'll jump in and put this together. I have everything cut out that I cut out. I have all my little leaves and circles and my background piece. So I'm going to start first by layering up these circles. I'm just going to take my liquid glue here and just add some glue to the back. You could also, if you have a spray adhesive, you can use that as well. I'm just going to go right with my liquid glue if it'll come out. Hmm. 
And we're just going to layer all of our circles together. That's going to give us kind of a little bit of dimension. And then we'll do our third layer. going to take an acrylic block and set that on the top just to let that dry. And that's all dry. I did switch glues. This one dries super quick, so I'm going to leave that aside. I'm going to use my multi matte medium, which is what I think is in this container, and we're going to glue on these leaves. I'm going to start just by putting them around in a circle. I'm going to put a couple of dots. I'm not going to push them all the way down, but I'm just going to layer them until I figure out how I want this to look. And we're going to use the bigger pieces to fill in the gaps as we go around. So we're going to kind of just fill this in a little bit. Once I get these around, I'm going to add my acrylic block on the top just to make sure that they're stuck down and then I'll put go through, add some extra pieces and then should be good. But I've never built a wreath. I don't have any wreath dies. I don't have any wreath stamps. So this is a first for me and I've always wanted to do a wreath, but I just never really purchased any any dies or stamps to do that. I may have just enough of these leaves. Well, I think I have more than enough leaves. Sprigs? Maybe they're sprigs. Are they sprigs or are they leaves? What would you call them? Leave that in the comments below. What would you call these? Sprigs, leaves, twigs? I'm not sure what to call them. I'm just going to take this acrylic block and set it on top and let that glue dry. While that's drying, I'm just cutting off a couple of these two um, section sprigs and making a little pile of them. I'm gonna use those to fill in some of those gaps that I'm gonna have on my wreath. And I've got another idea where maybe I can even add so that they're coming from the back of the wreath too, just to add some more dimension. All right, I started with the multi matte medium. That is taking way too long to dry. So I'm going to go back to my handy dandy trusty glue here. There is a pin in the top, so I always just kind of give it a couple of pumps just to make sure that there's nothing clogged there. And I'm going to use this glue instead. That other one dries great, but it just is taking way too long and I have zero patience for it. So we're gonna use my handy dandy. And I think for that, I'm not going to fill in too much more. That was the only place that was kind of the gap that I was having. But I do think I'm going to, even some of this is not completely dry. But I'm going to flip this over and do some sprigs even on the back. Just to add some extra dimension. And we'll fill those in. So I'm just going to take some of these two pieces. Make sure they're upside down since I'm doing this from upside down and get those on there just to fill in. I should probably do this with my tweezers. There we go. We're going to use the tweezers for this because doing it the other way, I'm, I'm making more of it, making it more difficult. My tweezers are, are definitely a better way to help fill in a lot of these gaps. I can see something's moving down there. I think, did I lose one? No. It's like performing surgery here. It's like playing operation, just getting all these little pieces in. All right. Don't really need one there. We're going to fill in there. Need another one right about here. Maybe this is why I don't do wreaths because it's too tedious, but it is a lot of fun to 
build it yourself. I am enjoying the process. Okay, so once again, I've got pieces underneath here. There we go. All right, so I have way, way enough to make probably another wreath. I'm going to set that back on there, let that dry some more because there are, even some of the front ones are still not dry. And we'll let that set up and then we'll come back and we'll do our next part. While that's drying, I am going to adhere my panel down to my cardstock. I like that white on white. I could always put that pink that I used to cut out the hearts back there, but I'm going to go white on white. And I'm going to use, I have a dotted tape runner. I'm going to use that. I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock here just to have underneath so it kind of grabs onto the dots that stick on, that might come through the hole. It'll grab onto there and not onto my desk. But that'll help me get this on there a little bit better rather than having a tape runner that's solid. I don't have to worry about it, you know, filling in all those gaps. So it'll just kind of skip over those areas. And then I'm going to line this up right at the bottom of my card panel and adhere this down. Now there are some spots that there's a little bit of glue coming through that didn't get cleaned up, but I'm just going to take my little handy dandy tool here, which is the jewel picker. So it has the wax on the end and a pointer or a picky tool on the other side, which is a nice picky tool, by the way. So I'm just using that. The other thing you could do is just come in with an eraser, kind of get into those grooves, but I think we're doing pretty good at getting some of these out, so I don't really have to do too much work. Just a couple of areas that need to be need to be cleaned up. So there we go. That is our card panel, and isn't that white on white just stunning? I love that. Then I think what I'll do is add my wreath that I'm building here. I'm going to add my wreath right to that panel so that I can continue building it while it's adhered down. Just going to run some glue around the back side and then we can add this right to the front of our panel, making sure that we're pretty center. I'm leaving some space down at the bottom so we could put our sentiment. So I'm going to use the hearts that I cut out, the pink hearts that I cut out, and add those as my flowers. So I'm just going to add some dots of glue in different sections and we are going to adhere those down. And I'm just going to use my jewel picker to pick these up. Now, the one thing I want to do is not put them so they're all facing the same direction. I want some of them to be sideways, upside down, and going in different directions. But as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to take that one out of there. I'm thinking I'm going to put a bow up here. So I'm just going to try to kind of skip that area. I'll even tuck one or two of these underneath. And that one we don't want going the same direction as that first one. So we'll kind of tilt that sideways. Put this one in that direction. And I could fill in even more as I go, but I think we are pretty good right there. So I'm using these, like I said, as my floral pieces. And I do think I'm going to add one up here even though my bow's going to be there, but at least it'll be filled in in that area in case I decide not to add a bow. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to each one of these pink hearts. And then I'm going to add the white hearts onto the, the pink hearts. So it kind of gives like a, like your center to your flower but not exactly. <laughs> Again, I'm going to try to do these in all different directions. And I think I might still come back in and fill in a little bit more pink hearts. I just want to make sure we have these, our wreath nice and filled up. I felt like my wreath needed a little bit more just to fill it out a little bit. So I added a layer, I'm adding a layer of the pink hearts underneath the little sprigs here. And I'm just kind of place them and then 
adding some glue and sliding them back into place. And that helped make our wreath look a little bit more full. Is this one adhered down? Oh, I didn't get that one yet. So we'll adhere this one down. I just have one more I needed to add in to fill it out, but I think that came out pretty good. I'm pretty thrilled with the way it looks. I set my wreath aside to dry, and I think I'm just going to go with a really simple, just happy Valentine's Day sentiment for this. And I am going to stamp that out in black ink. I'm going to adhere my stamp down at the bottom just to make it easier for when it's time to trim this up. And I'm just going to trim it up in a straight line just to kind of make things nice and simple. Just gonna ink this up with some black ink. It's perfect. It's a nice, simple sentiment. I could always do this also on black cardstock with some white embossing powder, but I just wanted to keep it pretty simple. And we're just gonna go with Happy Valentine's Day. I'll grab my paper trimmer and we'll trim this out. And making sure that I've got the same amount of space on both sides. That looks pretty good. I love the first trim when it kind of turns out good. Sometimes I find myself chopping away until I can get it just right. I think what I'm going to do, instead of going straight across like the whole end, although I do kind of like that, it kind of breaks up some of that background. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to add this strip right on there. At first I thought I was going to do like a little fishtail end and make it into a banner, but I kind of like that solid piece and breaking up the background of our die cut piece in the back here. Plus, we can get it on there nice and straight. So I just added some liquid adhesive to the back of that. We have our happy Valentine's Day. We're not done yet, because we feel like we need a bow and maybe some sparkle. This jute twine is something that I've purchased multiple rolls of because I have used it throughout the years of all of my card making, and I absolutely love this twine. It doesn't add a lot of bulk, and it gives you a card some nice texture. So I have doubled this up and I'm going to tie this into a bow. And all I do is just tie it like I'm tying my shoelace and we're gonna just kind of pull it to make sure we have nice even sides. I even sometimes will even make it so that one of the bows or loops is a little bit longer than the other. And I just think that looks so cute. So we have to cut this end because that still has a loop from where I doubled it and then we're going to cut this other end and then I will glue this down with my liquid glue right about there. And like I said, it just adds some nice texture to our card without adding a lot of bulk. So I'm going to set that in that glue and hold it in place for just a few minutes. But at the same time, I'm seeing maybe I need to make this one loop a little bit smaller. There we go, I think that works perfectly. That's perfect, I love that texture on there. And I'm gonna leave the tails just as long as they are. This particular one kinda of wants to keep curling up, so I just tucked it behind one of the leaves and this side is laying fine, but I love that little extra uh, dimension that gives and that texture with that twine. And then the last thing I wanna do is add some sparkle. Now I know for me, I have a very hard time getting these little diamonds and jewels off of the backing. So I like to use my little Cricut scraper here and that will help me pull it up and not fling it across the room, which is generally what happens. And I think what I'm gonna do is maybe, yeah, I am gonna do that. I'm gonna add one to either side of my Happy Valentine's Day. I'm gonna add one more on the other side of my happy Valentine's Day. And then I'm going to put a little cluster of the, see they fly all over the place. I'm going to add a little cluster I think maybe on the side over here at the top. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it on the side. I'm going to put a 
medium, a tiny one, and then I'm going to take this other medium one that I have left. These opal ones are my favorite. And then I'll add just a single one up here. So then we have our odd number of gems. I had to do a little adjustment on this particular one right here because it just felt a little off. But I really love how this turned out. Pretty good attempt for my very first uh, wreath and being able to use a lot of the supplies that I have here in my craft room and not buying anything new. I hope you enjoyed the first project in our new series, Cards and Crafts, and I look forward to seeing you back here soon. I will leave a link for the series down below as we add to the series. It will be um, on a playlist, so every time I post a new video, you'll be able to find that playlist and you'll see the whole entire series, but that'll be linked in the description down below. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! We're going to be working on making a tumbler using vinyl and our Cricut machines. I have these frosted tumblers, which actually this particular tumbler can be used for sublimation. If I wanted to print onto it, I could do that. But we're going to use it for vinyl today because I know not all of you have um, the ability to do the sublimation process. So I thought doing a vinyl project would be a lot of fun. So I have this tumbler, it's got the lid, it's like the Libby style tumblers, and it has also a glass straw too, so we have that here. I already went ahead and downloaded a design from designbundle.com and picked out what I wanted to use. I did a test cut of it and realized it just had a little bit too much detail for what I wanted to do. So. I edited it a little bit and it took out some of the more intricate die cuts and I'll give you a picture here on the screen so you can see what it looked like before I did my editing. And now we're going to go ahead and cut it out and get it ready to go. So I am going to start off with putting some vinyl. I am using Smart Vinyl. I have black vinyl that's shiny but I wanted to use something that was more matte and the only kind I have is the Cricut Smart Vinyl. So I'm going to use this. It's actually meant for the Cricut Maker and this isn't even a full 12 by 12 piece. So it is going to have to be put onto a mat since I'm using my Cricut Joy today. I am going to line this up in the corner just making sure that it's on my mat. And as long as it's pretty close to the side over here that is all I need. I'm just going to take my brayer here and make sure that this is on my mat really good. Once it's sent over to my machine, all I have to do is just start to load it and the machine's gonna recognize it and pull it in. While this is cutting, I'm going to go ahead and take a lint-free cloth. This is just a blue shop cloth and some rubbing alcohol, which I have in a spray bottle. It's going to spray it right onto my cloth. And I am going to wipe down my cup here just to get any dust or lint or anything like that that's on it. Especially after having all the renovations done in my room, there is still dust everywhere. Even though I think I got it all, it's still around the space. Okay, so that is all done cutting. I'm just gonna move my machine out of the way. And there we go. So what I'm first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this out a little bit so it is not quite the full piece. And then I can save my scraps for another project. Just want to make sure I don't cut into my design at all. Now if you've never worked with vinyl before, what we're going to do is weed our project. Weeding the project is simply removing either the letters and leaving the outside piece or removing the outside piece and leaving your letters. 
The only time you ever want to remove the actual design is if you're going to use this as a stencil, but I'm not using it as a stencil, so we're just going to go ahead and pull out the background of our design. So I'm just taking my picky tool and just going to grab it in the corner here and start peeling back. I like to peel at an angle. That's the best way that you can leave your design onto your backer piece. So this back part right here is your backer piece. And as I'm pulling, I'm just going to hold on to my pick tool here and help along anything that needs help. Like up here at this M, I probably, oh, it came out fine, but sometimes you get to spots that will need your help. So when I go around this curve here on my S, I just want to kind of grab that with my tool and that helps it come out a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and peel this all off, making sure that none of our letters get peeled off with it because I've done that before. I've peeled the whole thing, go to apply it, and then realize there's a whole letter missing. And that's usually because it's jumbled up in my piece of vinyl that is ready to go in the trash after I, re after I have removed it. So I'm going to go ahead and now do the inside pieces of my letters. We just have to pull those pieces out. We don't want any of that being left behind. And I'm just pulling out all of these inside pieces. I'm sticking it on my hand and I apologize for my hand here. I have, I burnt myself and I've been trying to let it air because I had it in a bandaid for the longest time. And yeah, so it's better for it to be a little bit in the air especially because it hurts when I, a couple of days ago, accidentally dried my hands just a little too roughly and made it a little bit uh, worse than it was. So there we go. I think I got all of the pieces out here. We just want to double check all of our letters, make sure we have all of the inside pieces. So that is our design. I double checked to make sure I got all the middle parts of our letters and we're all good to go. Let me just show you how I figured out how to measure and what size my project needed to be. So I have my Libby glass and this is an 18, I believe it's 18 ounces. I took my measuring tape and just went around the entire glass and found out that it was just about nine and a quarter inches. And then I also did the from top to bottom and that is just under five inches. I want to say five inches because of the curve on the bottom and the curve on the top. So we, I went a little bit lower than five inches, but I'll put the exact measurements that I used when I was designing the um, design in Cricut Design Space so you know what size that I used. What I need to do next is add my transfer tape to my design. Now I went ahead and cut a piece of transfer tape already and I'm just gonna kind of drop it in the middle and let it spread out. That is how I do it. Sometimes I will, um, if it has a backing, you can bend the backing back, kind of work your way down. If you've ever done wallpaper before, that's uh, sometimes how you do it if you use contact paper. But this is just a low tack tape that will let me grab my vinyl and have it stuck to the tape and then transfer it over to my cup. So what I did was put that down. I used my scraper tool or my little squeegee, if you want to call it and made sure that I did a nice, um, making sure that it's nice and burnished down. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the back side too. Back. Now the Cricut vinyl, the Smart vinyl especially, has a much thicker backing and I find it really hard to peel the vinyl off. So I'm hoping this goes smoothly, but we may be a little bit on the struggle bus trying to get this off. So the best way to do this, and I already see that some of it's already not coming off, so I'm gonna start in one corner and just slowly peel back. But what I don't like about the Smart Vinyl is the backing is so thick and I find it really hard to roll because that is usually how I do it. I roll my backing and make sure that it, that my vinyl will stick to the transfer tape. So we might be in luck. And I may just jink myself by saying that, but let's see how we do. So I have one that needs to stay down. Doesn't want to stay. There we go. 
So let's hope that we peel the rest of this off, leaving all those hearts where they need to be. And all of our little letters, oh, we got a couple hearts that are sticking to the backing and not to the transfer tape. So we'll just give this a good varnish on the back. There we go. All right, so that took a little bit of work to get that off there, but we did finally get it off. Okay, we're still gonna need our little scraper tool here. I have this little rubber um, cup holder. I got it on Amazon, and it's great for doing something like your cups. It has a little bit of an angle, so your glass is not sitting like perfectly flat, which I really like, so it's kind of tilted towards you. And it's a great holder and works as your third hand when you're trying to work with vinyl. So I'm going to use that to at least get my vinyl started and then I can take it off the holder and continue wrapping it around. So I'm just going to, before I even put this down, I think what I'm going to do is trim this up a little bit so that it's a little easier for me to see, especially because this uh, transfer tape doesn't have lines in it. So we just want to make sure that we're not um, going too far onto the curve of our cup. So I'm gonna start just by putting this down. I'm also gonna do the top and then one of the sides. So I'm gonna try to get as close to the top as I can without cutting any of my vinyl. That's just to keep it so I can see the top and the bottom much better of my glass. Because I'm working with two frosted pieces. My tape is frosted and my glass is frosted. So we're going to, that is so much easier to see. I'm going to start by just laying this down. I'm going to wrap one side and then I'll come over with the other side. And our sizing was perfect. So it's going to meet up nicely in the back here. So I'm going to use my scraper. We're going to now transfer our vinyl onto our glass. So I'm just going to make sure everything is nice and adhered down. We want to make sure all of our vinyl is here down. There's no bubbles. And one thing with vinyl, um, especially on glassware or anything like that, you don't want to put this into the dishwasher because your vinyl will come off. You do want to wait at least 24 hours. I used a permanent vinyl, so you want to wait about 24 hours and then you know it's on there really well. It just takes some time for it to cure onto the glass. So I'm gonna start peeling this off and I'm just gonna, again, doing everything at an angle uh, helps with things staying in place a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and start peeling this off. And I can already tell I'm already in love with this. Isn't that awesome? So we're just gonna keep peeling this back. We have one heart that's trying to come with us. So we're just gonna kind of push that into the glass. There we go. Again, I like to go really slow. That's how I know that everything is going to stay adhered down. One little area here that's got a bubble in it. We can get that in a second. And there we go. How adorable is that? I love it. That came out really nice. So I see a couple areas that have a bubble, especially in the larger letters of the love. So I'm just gonna use my fingernail to kind of push them in place. But that, those are the only two actually. Had one right here in the O and then one on the L. But that worked out really well. So then I have my little topper there and then I have my glass straw. 
which I love that it's a glass straw. That's pretty, it's pretty nice. Just as long as you don't drop it. Little rubber stopper in there so we can put our straw in. And there we go. How cute is that? So that's another cute Valentine's Day project. You can definitely fill this up with some candies. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some dark chocolate in here for my husband for Valentine's Day. And then he can have this um, at his desk either here at home or at work. Playing with this wire form for making wreaths. This is a 10 inch wire form. You can get them at the dollar store, you can get them at Hobby Lobby, all different places. You're also gonna need some macrame cording. This is just some pretty mauve, I think it's like even called peach, but it is not peach to me. It is a pretty mauve pink kind of color, and we are going to be using this to wrap our wreath. I already went ahead and started doing this. I have not plugged in my glue gun yet, but I will be plugging it in because we're going to need it for when we start decorating this. But I'm going to show you how to do this. I did most of it just to kind of um, get it done so it doesn't take quite as long on camera. But we are going to go ahead and wrap this. And all I've been doing is just pulling off some big sections of the macrame cording. And I think I could probably pull off enough that I could finish off this section right here. And I'm going to cut that off just using a pair of scissors. So what I'm gonna do is just start by kind of leaving this piece hanging out back over on the side. And I'm going to just loosely, I'm gonna keep that over that way actually. We're gonna loosely just start a couple of our wraps going around our wreath frame. I'm just gonna, maybe two or three times, we'll do another one. And that's gonna help me so that I can hold this into place. So I'm gonna pull this so that my back piece is just kind of going across the back and then I'll start coming in with my macrame and then start to twist it around and I'm pulling pretty tight. That's what's going to hold it in place. As long as this is being um, wrapped in between all of our layers, it's going to hold into place just fine. So I'm going to do a couple more twists and turns going around my frame here. And then we can continue wrapping this a little bit tighter. So the one thing that we have is the little gap right here that has the um, the wire frame that holds it apart. And my frame is not perfectly round. And I think I, what I'm doing is grabbing the wrong... Got myself a little twisted here. There we go. So you can see that I have that grip right here that's kind of holding our layers of our frame together. I'm just going to go right next to it. I'm not going to worry about covering that up just yet. I'll show you how I'm covering that up in a minute. As I'm going, I'm pushing my macrame so it's tighter together and none of that green will be showing. I'm going to do a couple more passes through. Again, making sure that our backing is staying behind there. So now I'm going to come back through with a little bit more tighter wrap on there. Again, every once in a while I'm going to do a little push through to make sure everything is nice and tight and close together. I'm not too concerned about the top part up here. I am going to put a bow on this, so I'm not going to worry about this being totally close. Plus, I've gotten to the point where my inside is already filled and the outside isn't completely filled. So how I do this when I am done is I just take the end of the cord and I'm just going to stick it right behind all of those layers. And I just start it and then I take my scissors and push it all the way through. This is something that's just going to be on display. I'm not going to actually hang it on the wall or on my door. It's just going to be on display on a shelf in my house. So there we go. We have that done. Now to hide these little areas where this green connector piece is poking through, all I'm doing is just taking another piece of the macrame, cutting it off, 
and then we are going to just tie it so that it's tied on the back. And you can see I did that with a couple of the other places here on my cording. And just, that'll hide that green piece so it's not sticking through. Give it a nice good tight knot on the back. And then we will cut this off. And there we go. That is our wreath form. So I love this. I think it came up pretty cool. And I am going to now play around with how I'm going to do the design of this. So this is going to be my top part, I think. Yeah, this part up here is going to be my top part because it's got a weird shape to it. The rest of it is about the same. This part up here is a little bit thicker than the rest. So that is definitely going to be the top part of my wreath. I want to add a bow to this wreath and I was looking through my stash of ribbon and I have this ribbon here that came from probably either Michael's or Joanne's and it's a fall ribbon and I think that might be the one I'm going to go with. I'm not sure about this one. Probably this one probably came from Hobby Lobby but I'm thinking this one because I kind of like the tighter weave of this than the stripes. And then I also have some of these flowers that I picked up from Hobby Lobby as well because I do not have any kind of paper flowers. While my hot glue gun is heating up, I'm going to show you how I fake it to make it look like I know how to make bows. Um, I, I have a terrible time with bow making, but this system when you're using a wired ribbon seems to work out really well for me. So I start just by creating a loop just like that, making sure that it's overlapped, and then I'll come in and do some very loose loops on the sides. So we just want to start by making sure that this size is the size that we want for our wreath, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to do just back and forth. So all I'm doing is folding it back and forth, and we want to make sure that when we're done, we have the even amount of loops on each side. So I am doing that. So I've got three loops on each side. Now what I'm gonna do is I have this floral wire and I take it, I just, I'm gonna cut off a piece while I'm trying to hold on to my ribbon. I should have done that first. And then I take the floral wire, which is a much bigger piece than I really need. Go through making sure I'm grabbing that first loop and then all of our layers that we put together. And then I pinch it together. And then in the back, I just do a tight twist to make sure that all stays into place. <laughs> I'll even sometimes twist the, the bow itself to get it to hold, but I'm not going to cut this off yet. So I only twisted that like once or twice. And what we could do now is just kind of fluff up, separate our bow. That's what I love about wire, wire bows or ribbon that has wiring in them because it makes it so much easier to give yourself a nice little fluffy bow. So I'm going to do is this piece right here can be serve as one of our tails. So I'm going to take my scissors and I will cut that off, but then we have to add our second tail. And again, this is my method for creating a bow. This is just the way I've figured out how to do it. That works for me. So I'm going to take another little piece. And I'm just going to kind of pinch it together and then let's cut this straight actually. We're going to cut this straight across first. And then what I do is I just kind of pinch this together and then I'll twist that ribbon one more time or that wire one more time to hold that in place. And then if you want you can even give it a little shot of hot glue to make sure that that's held in place really well so it doesn't fall off. So I'm going to trim this off. This is the end of my wire. And I'm not going to really, I just want to make sure that we're close to the same. I'll finish off the tails once I'm done putting my frame together. But that's how I create a bow. It's just, I kind of cheat it and figure it a way that works best for me. You could do this in any other way. If you have like one of those bow systems, you can do that. But this is how I just create a larger bow 
especially using wired ribbon. And I'll play with this a little bit just to get it perfect, but I'm not gonna do anything until this gets onto my wreath. So that's how I do my little, my cheat way. And then I keep this extra tail on the back of the ribbon or wire so that I can tie this onto my, my pro finished product. What I'm gonna do next is put this onto my wreath. So I wanna make sure that I'm using my, my odd shaped size. I'm just gonna take that wire and stick it right through those layers of the macrame. I want to put too far apart, but I want to put it a little bit far apart and get those so they're coming right out the back of our wreath. So we have that tied right there. I'm also going to just secure it a little bit more with some hot glue in between those two layers. But for right now, we're just gonna we're just gonna tie that on there. So we're just twisting it. If I want to, I can also put some hot glue here too. We are going to just go ahead and cut this off with our wire cutters. And I am gonna dot, I'm not a fan of my hot glue gun. It leaks all over the place. So I'm gonna add a dot just over the top of that wire for one, just to keep it so nobody gets poked by that wire and two, just to help kind of keep it in place. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is just pop a little bit of hot glue in between the bow and the wreath just to help keep my ties into place but also keep it a little bit more secure just making sure that we're not push, pushing down any of our top layer of our bow into that hot glue because otherwise it'll be stuck. All right so we'll just fiddle with our bow a little bit. Play with our tails. All right, so I really like how that bow came out. Looks pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of these paper flowers. And I think I'm just going to add some on either side. So I have these nice big white ones. And maybe I need to do pink. So let's start with the pink. I like how the pink is just slightly different than the pink that I used for the rope or the macrame and then we'll add in white so we're gonna do a little bit of white and pink and i probably put three on one side and two on the other but do i want to do two two pink and one white how do i want to do this so i'm going to play with this just a little bit oh i think i like like it like that so I am going to add the hot glue to the back of my paper flowers. This hot glue is the worst. I'm gonna stick this right there. Put our other one right next to the pink one. All right, then on this side, I'm going to add the smaller one right in there and our medium size one right there. This glue gun is like smoking. I might need a new glue gun. And then we will use a white one. Right next to that. Do I want to do that? Do I want to do it down a little bit further? I'm not completely happy now. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we have two pink on one side and a white and pink on the other. So there we go. I'm loving the way this turned out, but I think this one needs to come up a little bit higher. And then the last thing I need to do with this is just create our little fish tail ends. So just fold your ribbon in half, cut from the center to the edges, and you've got your little fish tail. Same thing with this side. Fold it in half. And then you're cutting down from the center towards the end.
For our next project, we're gonna use our macrame because we have a lot of it that we need to use up. So we're gonna use that. We have some wooden beads. I have an acrylic disc that has a hole in the top. And then I also have a sentiment that I cut out using my Cricut that says love. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting this together. I'm going to worry about my acrylic piece later. We're gonna work on doing our beading first. I'm gonna start off with a nice long piece of macrame and we are going to fold it in half. So we have a loop at the bottom and then we have our ends here. So this might be more than what I need, but we are going to, we're gonna do a little cutting of it later on. So there's that. And then we're gonna take another piece. First thing we're gonna do is create a tassel. So I have two pieces of the macrame. I folded it in half, so I'm gonna have this loop on the top. And then I have another piece here that I'm just gonna actually use as my way of tying my macrame together. So I'm just gonna pull out maybe two or three pieces and we are gonna use that to tie a knot right in the center. Well, not in the center, but up towards the top of the loops. This way it kind of blends in and you don't see it because I'm using the same color thread that the macrame is made out of. So we have two loops at the top here and then we have these pieces down here. So what we're gonna do now is take our ends. I'm gonna take this first one and I'm just gonna untwist it. So we're gonna untwist it and you're gonna end up with three of these little sections. So we have three sections right here. And then what we could do is play with this even more. So we could take each of these sections and split them up into single strands. So that was what we'll do to create our tassel. So I'm gonna do that really quick and I'll come back and show you what it looks like after we've got that all done. So we'll definitely want to play with this a little bit more, but that's pretty much what you do is just to create your tassel by separating all those strands from your macrame and they come out really cute. And I like that it's got a little bit of a wave in it because it's from the twisting of the cording. So there we go. That is a tassel. We don't need anything that long, but it's created. And now what we're going to do is take that piece of the macrame that we cut and looped and I'm going to feed one end through the opening here and then what we're going to do of course it's coming apart on the end all right there we go so we're just going to pull that through and we're just going to make sure that we're even on that each end I'm going to grab some tape so you're going to use some tape just on the ends to hold both of those strands together. It also makes it a little easier for feeding it through the loop. And I'm just using some tape and kind of making it so it's a little bit of a point. So kind of like your um, shoelace, you know, your, what do they call that on the end of your shoelace? Aglet? Isn't that what it's called? I'm going to take one. So this particular bead set has pretty larger size ones and then medium size ones. So I'm going to take one large one, which they have a great opening on these. It's nice size. So I'm going to feed it on and just put it right down to the end where we have our, our tassel. I'm going to then put two of the medium size ones on the end and I think that is all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do two. I'm gonna take my scissors, instead of fighting with the tape to try to peel that off, I'm just gonna cut it off. And then we're going to put a piece of tape on either end. Just 
hold it, keeps it held together so it doesn't fray because as you can see you can fray them and we'll end up with that on the end it'll make it harder to feed it through our beads but it also makes it a little easier for feeding it through our beads too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to string bean what I'm going to do now is string beads onto each side of these so we have them so they're through two strands of the macrame and now we're going to do one strand i'm going to do this all with the medium size beads and we're going to make a nice little decoration with this so what you could do is stain these beads if you want to if you want to stain them you can paint them i kind of like the real natural look to these so i'm going to feed a whole bunch of these onto one string and then we'll feed it um, onto the other side so we're making a nice decorative piece that we can add on to my little display that I'm working on here. So we're going to keep feeding and you can do both sides. All right, so I'm just putting my last couple of beads on here. I have 15 on each side. Three, four, all right, so 15 on each side, so they're pretty even. And all I'm going to do is just easily just tie a knot. Pull them together. And we'll do another one. Just like so. So then we made a nice little decorative bead. And now we're going to play with our disc here. So we're gonna need the disc, our piece of vinyl that we cut our sentiment out of, and some transfer tape. So our acrylic piece has a backing on it. So I'm just gonna pick off this backing. The backing left a little bit of that residue, so I am going to clean this off using some rubbing alcohol and a shop towel. These are great because they're lint free, but it'll also help me remove some of the, the kunky stuff that's left on the back of my acrylic. All right, so there's our disc, and hopefully you can see that. Is it better if you sit on there? Yeah, you can see a little bit better if I keep it on here, so I'll leave that on there so you can see it better. I am going to weed my love sentiment and all I'm doing is just going to pull out the outside and then I will pull out the inside of the letter. So we're just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Nice and close up there. All right. So we're just going to take our pick, start at a corner, pull this back. making sure our sentiment stays on our backer piece, which I think I'm pulling up some of those letters. Okay. And then we're going to kind of fiddle with this one a little bit because the piece came undone. So we're gonna pull out the middle part of that loop there Pull out the inside of our E, but we need to get a lot of little pieces out of this. So we got to get the L out. That one stuck to my finger, which is perfect. The inside of our O. When you're working with little tiny pieces, it's really hard not to get them stuck all over the place. So I'm making sure I'm taking my time and getting them so they're not stuck on the backing. And I'd rather them stuck to my fingers than to anything else. Cause once you get them stuck and they sit for a while, it's, they're, they're impossible to get up. Cause especially if you're using a permanent vinyl. So we are going to take a piece of transfer tape. This is just a big roll of transfer tape that I have in my stash. Need to find the end here. And 
and I'm going to cut off a piece to go right over the top of our love sentiment. I'll go right there and then I'm just going to use my fingers to scrape that down. Flip it over, we'll do the same on the back. And then that peels off super easy. That's a nice tiny one, so we don't have to worry about that too much. And then we're gonna put our love, and I have the hole right here, but I think I want it to be at a little bit of an angle for when it's hanging off of our... Yeah, we're gonna do this at an angle. Make sure that's on there nice and well. These little ones are super easy to do. So we're just gonna pull that backing right off. I don't even have to bring out my scraper tool for that. When I cut, I'm gonna grab a piece from the stuff that I cut off before, and then I'm just gonna pull out some of this twine, or some of this thread rather, to feed through our hole. Maybe, oh, I had it through. I had it through and then I, I lost it. Stay through, okay. There we go. So we're going to tie that onto the end of our beads here so we can put this all together. All right, so I'm going to take my little disc here and we're going to feed the macrame that we fed through the hole of our disc or our acrylic piece. I'm going to feed that through our loop and then we can tie this right onto our beads. <clears throat> and then we'll just cut it off. I didn't tie that on very tight, made, left it a little loose so it could kind of dangle. But there we go, that is, I love the way that came out. Now if I want to, I can cut this down and I think I'm just gonna cut it a little bit, just like so. And that would be it for that project. be working on creating some things to go inside of this wooden bowl. This is a wooden heart-shaped bowl that I recently picked up at Hobby Lobby, but I wanted to make a couple of extra little decorations to put inside of this bowl, which is going to go in the entryway of my house. So I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to show you some of the ideas. I have two different things that we're going to work on today, and I will show you what we're going to be doing. I bought these a while ago at Hobby Lobby, and I always love the little wrapped yarn kind of project here. And I've made these once before with just using some couple layers of cardstock. But in here, I could feel that there's a wire frame of some sort, and I bought them in both red and pink. Now the pink I really like, and I use those for photo drop backgrounds, but I wanted to make a couple that would kind of go with the colors. I'm not really liking the red too much. It's just a little too bright. And I thought I would try taking them apart, which I already did take apart. There's a wire frame. I'll keep three of them for uh, future projects. But right now I'm going to make three of these. One I already have done, but I'm going to show you how I did that. So they have wire frames on the inside. And I just took my scissors. I'm just going to run along the inside of this and cut it off. The thread or yarn rather is kind of um, glued onto that wire frame, but that's okay. It actually just pops right off. So I am going to make a mess with this and cut them all off. So we're just gonna go right around and get those cut off. I'm gonna try to grab these and throw them right in the trash. And then we can just start popping off these pieces. So this one looks like it's kind of tied around there which is good to know because I was trying to figure out how to get it so you couldn't see the little bottom part, but they are just glued on and you can pop them off. We're gonna end up covering this anyway, so you're not gonna be able to really tell. So we're just gonna peel all of these off, it makes a nice little fuzzy red mess everywhere.
So this one I'm going to have to cut off. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to do that with the other one, and then I'm going to show you how to actually make these adorable wrap, yarn wrapped hearts that we can use for decorations. To go along with the color theme, I have this baby uh, yarn that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, and it just bought one. I just bought one skein of it, but I thought the colors went nice with the kind of more natural look that I'm going for here. So I'm going to start off by just pulling a bunch of this off here, and I think you're supposed to pull when you're working with yarn from the inside of the skein, but I did not do that. But that's okay. We're we're yarn newbies. So we're going to start just wrapping and it still has a lot of the red fuzz on it, but that's okay. We're going to cover it anyway. So I'm just going to start by kind of holding on to the yarn and wrapping it around my frame here. And we're just going to go in all different directions, just kind of covering everything up. And what I like using is this variegated yarn because it really comes out super pretty. Oops. So we're going to kind of start heading over in this direction here. And the thing is you just want to fill up this whole section so that we're covering all of that frame and then we have that really pretty different variegated look going. off a little bit more of this. We're just going to keep filling in till we know we don't have any more of the red showing or any of the wire that was showing from that frame, which like I said, I've done this in the past and I used a piece like double layered or triple layer of, of cardstock I made them, but I like that uh, this frame here, which is going to make sure we cover that very end, might be why they had it knotted down at the bottom here just to keep that covered, but I think we got it. Okay, so we're gonna cut this off. And then on the back, let's see, what side do I like better? I'm thinking I like this side the best. So I'm going to knot this on the other side we're just going to pull this through underneath. Actually, let's go back one. There we go. We have a longer piece to work with. So I'm just going to pull this through underneath. And then I'll take it with a loop and just put it in there to knot. And I'll do one more knot. Oh, I can't get my yarn through. There we go. There we go. So we'll just cut this off. And there we go. Oh, I really love the variegated look to that one. So pretty. All right. So that's going to go right inside my bowl. And then I'm going to do the other one. So we'll just speed up the video. So you can, I'll just do it one more time and you can watch while I get this ready. And there we go. I love how they came out because they're both, they're all three of them are just a little bit different in color, especially with using the variegation yarn. And I love the way it turned out. It's super cute. So we're going to put these inside the bowl. And I do feel like my bowl just needs 
a little bit something else. So I'm going to show you one more project that we can make to put inside of a bowl. I have these little wood pieces there from the, the wood pile and I am going to use these up. I have used a couple of these at Christmas time for some projects that I did and I thought they would be good to use also for this project. And we're going to do something a little crazy with these. First thing we're going to grab is our stays on ink and then I'm going to use a couple of different stamps. So I have this one because I want to use the hug sentiment. I have this one because I want this little heart with the um, kind of looks like a like a balloon heart right here. And I think I'm also going to pull out this stamp set because I have um, a couple sentiments in here that I thought would be fun to use. So the first thing we're going to do is I just need to go and grab something for this ink. So I'll be right back. Before we get started, I did go and buy a new stays on ink because my other one was really old and extremely dried up. And I wanted to do this project. So the first thing is, is that they have this little clear plastic cover. that says, do not discard. It helps keep your ink longer. And I've had mine for years. I'm going to stick a glue dot inside and I'm going to put this back together and just push it down. And that should pick up that plastic and that sticks to the cover. So this way you never have to worry about losing that. So I keep that right in there and every time I take this off I don't have to worry about trying to grab that plastic piece to pull it off. Just a tip for you today. <laughs> so we have these two pieces and I've got some stamp sets and I just need to grab my acrylic block for stamping which I have whoops sorry about that I have one right here and I'm going to start off with just plain stamping I'm not going to do anything super fancy so I'm going to grab a sentiment or two here so I have this stamp set here and I think we have love is in the air, all you need is love, and you are loved. I think those are the only sentiments that are in here, yes. And then there's this quote here. And I might just do the quote. I think I'm just going to do that quote. Originally I thought it was love is in the air, but let's grab that quote and do that. So we have loved you, love you, loved you yesterday, love you still, always have, always will. So I wanted to see which one of these would fit best. I think it fits in this one the best. So I'm going to use my acrylic block. We're going to pick it up and we are going to stamp this out. So we're going to ink this up. I'm standing up now just to make sure I'm standing right over the top of this. And I am going to stamp this out right into the middle of that wood block, making sure that I get a good pression in the middle to make sure those letters change transfer over. And perfect. This is going to look really cute inside of my basket or my little bowl that I'm making. And the reason why I'm using stays on ink is because it is a um, just a ink that works on all different type of surfaces. So you can even use it on metal. It'll it'll adhere to that. It won't rub off. So I'm going to use that for my wood pieces here. So we're going to not we're done with this one. We can peel this one off. And we'll put that back in its packaging, put it away. And then I have this last one. And I think with this one, I am going to stamp out these little hearts here. Or the heart kind of balloon or flower. It gives it more of a flower than it is a balloon, isn't it? It looks balloony to me. <laughs> so we're going to put this on here. And then we will stamp that using our stays on ink again. Let's set this one to the side. And I'm going to put a couple of them on here. So I'm going to do one that's a right on each side. This one I'm going to put a little bit lower. And I messed up a little bit with the stamping, but that's okay. I could flip this over and do the other side, but it's not terrible. It's, it's okay. So we're going to do that one and then we do oh we want to also add a sentiment to this one so we're going to put this one away and then we'll grab our sentiment so this one has hugs and xoxo and i think i'm going to use since i used love on my acrylic piece i think i'm going to go with the the hugs on here 
So we're just gonna make sure it's going in the right direction. And that is really hard to tell. So I think I'm gonna grab a piece of paper here just to make sure I'm going in the right way. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna stamp that out so we have hugs going straight across the top here. Perfect. Oh, that is so sneaking cute. This one I think I wanna do a little something different with. I'm gonna grab some scrap paper here I'm gonna try something a little bit different here. So I have stamped out my image and I have these um, acrylic paint pens. So I'm gonna use these and do some coloring onto this piece. And I picked colors, I picked a white color and this kind of like pinky. It doesn't tell you what color these are. Just uh, went ahead and primed it before I started this section. But what you wanna do if you have any kind of paint pens, you wanna shake them up a little bit and then most of them you have to you start by pumping it until the ink starts to flow. So we're gonna color in our hearts. So I'm gonna use the acrylic paint from my pen and color in the inside of these hearts. How cute is that? And it's almost the exact same color as our project that we originally made with the uh, I'm just trying to avoid the um, black ink that we used to stamp just to kind of keep that outline going there. And I'm going to even go over this one a one more time just to make sure we have a nice good coating of the acrylic paint on here. And all I have to do is just keep pumping it just to keep that paint flowing through the pen. I really love the pink. It is so cute. I'm not a pink person. But for some reason this year, I'm kind of feeling the pink. All right, and now the white. Now, hopefully this white is okay because I tried another white pen and it was in bad shape. So we just need to get the white flowing on this pen. I tried a different pen, but the nib was busted on it. So we're gonna try this one and see how it works. But I'm just gonna fill this one in just like I did the other one and fill in the heart. Now I kind of messed up on the stamping, but I kind of like that. It actually looks pretty neat. This white pen is not in the best of shape either. So we're gonna try just adding some of the the white by pushing down and getting it flowing through and then I'll spread it out with the tip of the pen. Come on. There we go. Oh, I just think that's so cute. So I'm going to let that dry, but that pretty much is it. I could see these all different times of years, so fun. And I am not one that can draw. So this is using my stamps to be able to get some nice decorations out of it is kind of fun. All right, so we're just gonna kind of set our bowl up. So I'm gonna put one up here. I like this lighter one, maybe the lighter one on the side and that one here. And then we have our sentiment, which I think I will prop right in the middle here. And then we could put our other heart laying there and maybe our hugs. Well, actually we'll do the hugs over here and our other heart here. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it inspirational and found some ways to use some of the supplies that you have in your craft room or tried a new crafting thing that you haven't tried before. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.